On June 13th, the Master Plan Update Steering Committee hosted a public forum to gather information in regards to what kind of future they would like to see for the town of Littleton. More than 200 people showed up for a dinner and a chance to have their voices heard. This is a wonderful turnout tonight, folks. You've heard me say that it's got to be at least four times now. I can't tell you how excited I am. And certainly I hope you all are excited too about this evening. Um, somebody just said, good turnout. I said, yep, now we've got to deliver. So uh, you showed up, uh, and we're going to have to show up too as the committee members. Um, what I am going to do here is I am going to introduce um, the lead of our consulting group, our KG Associates, uh, Ms. Judy Barrett, who's standing, here. sitting behind me. Uh, she's going to take over here in a second, and uh, our KG Associates is going to run the show for us this evening. And then we'll be getting back together, and they'll give you some instructions on how we're going to do it, a little bit of a presentation. And then certainly as we go through the entire process in the evening, and 9.30 is our uh, stop point, so we're not going to keep everybody late tonight uh, in case there's a good late night show on you want to get home to see. Um, but certainly want everybody to be able to participate tonight. So Ms. Judy Barr from RKJ Associates. Thank you. Um, we do report to, and we're working with, your master plan um, update steering committee. The names of your members are here on this slide. I won't read them all, but I know most of them are in the room. Um, and I think actually you probably already stood up, but just for our sake, can the members of the master plan committee just like wave your hand or stand up or like tell us you're here? Great committee. Um, it's been very helpful um, to us working with them. They've just given us very good guidance. Um, about our team. My name is Judy Barrett. I'm the Director of Municipal Services for RKG Associates, which is uh, a firm that does uh, planning work, economic development work, uh, some real estate consulting. Um, We're based in Massachusetts, in New Hampshire, um, Alexandria, Virginia, and Atlanta, Georgia. So we tend to work pretty much along the East Coast, um, out to about the Midwest. We travel a lot, as consultants tend to do. Uh, with me this evening um, is not the entire team, but I just want to introduce, um, you know, sort of who the lead people are here. First of all, Eric Halverson. I don't know where you are. You've probably disappeared. Eric Halverson um, is the is a senior uh, planner and analyst with RKG. He's really coordinating this project on a day-to-day -day basis for us. Um, with Daphne Politis, who is to my left, and Daphne, you're going to hear from a lot in a few minutes because I'm going to turn this whole meeting over to her. Peter Flinker, I don't know where you are. Are you here somewhere? Peter Flinker is a landscape architect um, with Dodson Flinker. Um, I've had the privilege of working with Peter on some other projects. Um, they're here to help with uh, a couple of elements of the plan that I'll talk about more in a minute. Um, and the person who could not join us tonight is Patty Kelleher from Community Opportunities Group, the firm I used to work with. Patty's a preservation planner. Some of you may have already met her um, at a little sort of focus group meeting that she had uh, a week or so ago. She's also working on this project, and you'll get to see her more uh, at a subsequent meeting. And then um, we have another RKG associate out here, Jahangir. Hello! <laughs> Jahangir's out at the sign-in table, and you probably met him when you were filling out name tags and so forth. So most of us are here this evening. I want to talk to you a little bit about kind of what a master plan is, what it consists of, what it looks like in the end. People have a, a, a vision sometimes of a master plan being a big book. And it does sort of end up being kind of a big book, but it's really much more than that. Um, we think as planners of a master plan, that really is sort of a, it's a guidebook for the physical evolution of your community. To get there, we do a comprehensive analysis of kind of all aspects of community development, um, from environmental preservation to, to housing to economic development, sort of all aspects of things that make up a community. It's typically a long range-ish, mid to long range, 10 to 15 years uh, plan. And over time, um, you hope that it will be used as a public policy document that will help decision makers today and tomorrow, including people who are not necessarily in this room and people who are not necessarily even participating in this process, but will one day be leaders in the community and need to make decisions. And you hope that they'll be able to consult the plan um, and get some wisdom from it. Um, a master plan in Massachusetts consists of specific topics. Um, just so you know, there is a state law that we kind of have to uh, pay attention to. 
It's called Chapter 41, Section 81D. Uh, it prescribes certain contents of a master plan, uh, including uh, most centrally the land use element. These will end up looking like chapters in the book. We call them master plan elements, the components of the plan. Land use is really around uh, regulation. It's about how are you going to, uh, to grow and accommodate different types of, of land uses, whether it's housing, whether it's business, um, public facilities. It really is the thing that brings the whole plan together. Uh, transportation and traffic and circulation is a key piece of any master plan. It really needs to relate well with land use or you can end up with some uh, you know, difficult disconnects that are, make it hard for people who live and work in the community. The other elements include economic development, um, housing and residential development, natural resources, cultural resources, um, open space and recreation, public facilities, um, and, and governance which is not a state requirement, but it is something that your community um, said specifically that you wanted included in the plan. I'm seeing this more in the last seven to 10 years. Communities are asking for a look at governance in their master plans. And some of it is simply that when you finish this phase of a master plan process, you're gonna have a lot of things to do as a community and you need to make sure that you have the capacity to do that. So the governance element is kind of a helpful way to look at how are you structured, she'd stop. Um, how are you structured organizationally? Do you have kind of personnel and, and boards and committees where you need them? So governance is a key piece. Threading all of these different components of the plan uh, will be the theme of sustainability. We will be looking at sustainability issues in every element of the plan. Rather than having sort of a chapter called sustainability, we're going to use that as a way to kind of bind these pieces together. Um, what purpose does this serve? Well, in my experience as a planner, um, a master plan process certainly encourages residents to get involved with their town, here you are. Um, it creates policies to guide change over time. We would all like our communities to sort of freeze frame where they are and not change, but that's unrealistic. So the issue is how do you guide change in a way that is beneficial for the community um, and simultaneously preserves the things that really you know, matter to people who live in the town. Establishing rules for kind of orderly development. So people kind of know when they buy in a community, if they buy a house, if they buy business property, what's likely to change around them or to happen to properties around them. A master plan can be instrumental at kind of cueing people to what the town's plans are for different areas of the town. Certainly to protect natural resources. Setting priorities around infrastructure and facilities. I think we all know that when we borrow to, uh, to build public schools or town halls or fire stations or whatever, those are costly projects and we can't do them all. So trying to make decisions about what things sort of matter most relative to an overall um, growth and preservation plan is very important and a master plan helps to elucidate um, those choices. And then finally, providing guidance to landowners and developers um, and certainly the town boards that administer permitting uh, processes and the staff who help the boards. It's a way to sort of say, here's where we're trying to go. What's in a master plan? Um, the sort of guiding um, piece of a master plan is the community vision and goals, and we're actually starting to work on that this evening. That's part of why you're here. Um, an inventory of existing conditions is kind of hard to know um, what you need to change, if anything, if you're not really clear about what you have today. So there's an inventory on each one of those topic areas I referred to earlier, an existing conditions assessment, and then a trends, um, a trends and uh, an issues analysis and projections as well. Uh, all of this kind of culminates in some policy choices the town needs to make. Uh, and an implementation program to carry out those choices. Master plans are full of maps, they should be because they're physical. Um, and then a process for evaluating and updating a plan. And this is something I think we will always strive to help communities understand that when you get the book, it's not done. That's really just a beginning. Um, it's the culmination of a phase of planning, but a master plan that doesn't die on the shelf, the one that actually gets used is one that is evaluated really all the time um, and updated if necessary. You just know nothing that says you have to wait 10 or 15 years to update your plan. So the key questions that we ask as planners um, in any master plan process is where do you want to go? Uh, where are you today? Where are you going given your existing policies uh, and trends? And what do you need to change in order to align where you're going with what you want to be? And how will you get there? I mean, that's sort of the questions that coincide with those points I just referred to about what a master plan uh, does for a community. 
So let me just tell you a little bit about the process and where we are with this um, so that you can make sense out of why you were invited here tonight. Uh, first of all, I'm hoping you can read this. This is kind of a chart. I just broke this up into quarters. Uh, we're really working on this project over the course of about five quarters. Um, and so where we are right now is we've sort of started the project. Clearly, that's why we're here. Um, we'll be meeting throughout with the Master Plan uh, Update Steering Committee. They really are the ones who are guiding this process. Um, and so we need to provide them with information and they need to kind of tell us uh, how they want the plan to, to develop. We have met with some groups, uh, both individually and also folks who are town officials or interested people or just knowledgeable folks about, uh, about different aspects of this plan. We're trying to get ourselves educated. I think that's the best way for me to explain it. Um, people kind of assume when you hire consultants, they come in sort of knowing everything to do. Well, that's not true at all. We, we kind of bring experience, but one of the things we bring experience in is that we need to get educated about your town. So we've been trying to do that. Um, we have um, a, a number of public events planned. This is the first one. There'll be a couple of charrettes in the fall uh, that will be led by Peter Flinker, who eventually you will see. <laughs> there you are, Peter. Thank you. Uh, Peter will be leading those charrettes in the fall. Um, and then we have a social media presence at this point. We do have a website established. I'll sort of get to that at the very end of this presentation. Um, so if you're interested, you'll have a way to kind of keep abreast of what's happening with this process as it evolves. Uh, where we're aiming for is uh, toward the middle to the end of the summer, we're going to be providing the, the Master Plan Update Steering Committee with a draft of what I call the Inventory and Existing Conditions Assessment. Um, that's, we're sort of targeting that for, for August. Um, and at the same time, same time we're, uh, excuse me, July, and at the same time we're looking to, um, to provide sort of an issues assessment as well. Those will all be sort of coming in, in uh, phases together, more or less. We will then be making some recommendations based on direction from the committee, um, and we'll be putting together a draft master plan, sort of winter, early spring. Uh, that will come back to you to be vetted again um, in terms of a public hearing with the planning board. Uh, under state law, the planning board actually adopts the plan. They're the ones who have the authority to prepare it. But your community, like many other communities, is planning to at least present this uh, plan to town meeting uh, for acceptance, uh, if not approval. Uh, it, town meeting doesn't technically have a legal role in the master plan process, which probably sounds weird, but it's a good idea to ask town meeting to, to weigh in on the plan. And that's what your community plans to do. So how are we going to find out where you want to go? Um, well, first of all, we're asking the Master Plan Steering Committee, as I said, those interviews, which culminated in participation of about 60 people, the topic area assessments I mentioned, community-wide participation events like tonight on the charrettes in September, and then the social media, and overall, or throughout this evening, and these other events, we're going to be asking you to help us understand your community and understand your aspirations for your town uh, and the things that really matter to you uh, the most. So why are we here? Um, the purpose of this meeting is to identify the shared values that uh, for future uh, development and change in your community. We'll be using this feedback tonight and other information to, uh, to develop a vision and a set of draft goals for your master plan, which will be vetted with the master plan update steering committee. Um, the master plan that will ultimately be developed um, to guide future decisions will be based on that input from you um, and others over the next several months. So for the next hour or so, we're going to be asking you to participate in some small group discussions. Um, the groups will be a little larger than we expected because of the turnout at this wonderful meeting. Um, and so at some point here, in about two minutes, I'm going to actually turn this meeting over to Daphne. But just so you know what's coming, um, you're going to be participating in small groups. Everybody will be asked the same questions. And then we'll be asking you to come back and we'll kind of reconvene and hear kind of how the groups address those questions, perhaps what the high points are. Uh, and then talk about next steps, and then finally the, the raffle. So that's sort of the agenda for the evening. Um, and finally, just as I said, we have a master plan website set up, so you'll be able to follow this process uh, for over the next several months. It's called planlittleton.org, um, and that's a not great screenshot of it, but I wanted to at least see that it is up and running. Residents broke into groups and were asked a series of questions designed to pinpoint what they liked and disliked about Littleton.
Afterwards, all groups assembled together to present their findings. Our first question, our number one response were, was town services, police, fire, and highway. Our second was Littleton Electric Water Department with seven votes and Clean Lakes was uh, third for question number one. Question number two, let's see, we had uh, seven for a nice COA. Um, we had number two was need tax breaks for seniors. And we had a tie for number three, sewering the common and a lack of funds for park and rec. Question number four. We had a um, couple ties here. Uh, our top getter was space, fair to all sides involved, specific, oh, I'm sorry, conservation, con conversations about saving and preserving space, fair to all sides involved, specifically the landowner. That was our number one vote. Uh, we had another tie for our number one, more sports fields. Both got eight. Uh, number two, were, we had a tie, maintain existing buildings in walkable downtown and entire town. Our third was Sewer the Common. First question for what we like the best, uh, small town feeling, followed by sense of community, followed by rural nature. Question number two, what we'd like to, uh, what our concerns are. Number one, lack of sidewalks. Number two, speeding on side roads and a, a tie actually at number two as well. Lack of places for kids to hang out. Okay, and our question number four. We had another tie actually. Our first one was more walkable and bikeable and accessibility. Number two, sewage, sewage system. And tied for third to more concern for historical preservation and senior slash teen recreation center. But on question number one, your favorite things is open space and land, the neighborhood small town feel, and the good schools and the good school system. So number two, the least favorite, the, the through town traffic, the speed of vehicles and congestion, the lack of a walkable downtown or town center, and then the uh, mega mansions and, and wanting more affordable homes. And we kind of had a tie with bike lanes and walkability. And then the last one, the one thing to improve, Littleton, to restrict the housing, have a small size of homes, affordability, uh, more green space, and usable space. What you would like most is open space, conserve and expand, uh, school system, and school system, small town feeling, and sense of community, they are tied up. Sorry, for question number two, um, lack of sidewalks and then second place reverse infighting of town politics and tied in third get rid of strict separation of residential and housing so they want mixed use zoning and not rezoning land to benefit specific people or business and for question number four Save as much open space as possible and attract and support small business in town center and tied in third, give park and recreation budget and build walkways. Question number one had a four-way tie. <coughs> Role character, open space, keep the L-E-L-W-D, and town provided land for senior housing. Thank you. Number two, we had one with more traffic signals, and we had a three-way tie, traffic control with trucks in particular, insufficient senior housing, and inconsistent permitting. And number four, number one was senior housing, improved COA facilities, and a new library. Okay, uh, question number one. Uh, our first bullet was uh, maintain a strong library. The second one was preserve our lakes. And we had a tie, the third, uh, maintain small class sizes, 
and our, uh, the town's rural character. Uh, question two, uh, with 17 votes, um, to have more inclusive local politics, quote, uh, do away with the good old boy network, uh, and uh, people felt that uh, more uh, open problem solving would be useful. Uh, the second one was uh, lack of diversity on town boards and committees. Uh, specifically not, not enough female uh, representation. Uh, and uh, the third one was, clean, quote, clean up the common area. Uh, and I think uh, what was meant there was basically a lot of the properties are beginning to run down as they're remaining vacant. Uh, question four. Um, the, with 13 votes, uh, things to improve the town would be to institute term limits. Um, and it was quite a discussion. If I was described, by the way. Um, uh, clean, uh, clean slate for the Board of Selectmen and Planning Board and start over. Um, okay. The second place was a, a three-way tie. Yeah, the second place was a three-way tie. Uh, uh, restrict traffic in the common area. Uh, build a, a library slash community center uh, and preserve open space and um, the long-term financial planning is important. One of the favorite things of our group was nearly unanimous about library, good schools, open space, and a small town culture. They want to preserve that. That should resonate. The second was, again, library, conservation land, and affordable housing. When we got to what's the least favorite thing, the least favorite things was uh, the fact that we have a severe problem in walkability, bikeability, including sidewalks and crosswalks. Uh, it's so multicolored, I can barely read the rest of the chart. <laughs> the other one was um, cronyism and nepotism. I, I guess we took the gloves off. So it's, it's basically very similar to what's appeared in the previous report. Uh, the others are traffic lights uh, in common and too much traffic. And those are the, the least favorites. These were the things that my group wanted to improve for local. Improve the racial, socio-economic diversity of the town. It is straight across, multicolored, just as the request is. Next, a good master plan that can be followed. I took this one through. Finally, sidewalks and bike paths. Those are the things that my group came up with before the improvement board. Uh, some of the things that came up. Favorite things, open space, peace and quiet. Uh, the active library, that's really the center piece of it. Anyway. And farms selling local products. Not so favorite things. Uh, public process and governance, generally, a lot of discussion on similar issues that have been discussed. Uh, too much emphasis on development. And not planning enough for the aging population. The one thing to improve, stronger protection for open space, farmland, wetlands, etc. Uh, removing conflicts of interest from government. And opening up committees through better participation and collaboration. Good work, and we came up with this list of favorite things. Number one was active recreation. Number two was good schools. Uh, number three, small town feel. Least favorite things. Uh, lack of active recreation facilities, lack of sidewalks and, uh, and wide uh, uh, road shoulders for bicycles, and uh, also the increasing uh, size of our classes in school, was seen, uh, too large, was seen as something that was least favorite. Then on uh, one thing we'd like to improve in Littleton 
in uh, first place was uh, increasing the commercial tax base, then uh, increase uh, active recreation, and number three was a vibrant town center. Um, question number one, um, our group really appreciated the open space, working farms, and the library. Concerns included empty storefronts, not enough restaurants, and rising taxes. Things to change, um, decrease the rate of tax increases, uh, more green space, and focus on redevelopment over new development. Okay, so our group for question number one, uh, the small town feel and the character of Littleton, uh, the conservation areas, both the number of them, the amount of acreage, and the accessibility of those in the library. Question number two, the quality of development around the common could be improved, the rising property taxes, and also the general lack of entertainment options in the town. And question number four, controlling new development while preserving and maintaining open space, uh, improving the common, and keeping working farms. Okay. Our group had, for what we liked about Littleton, our number one was the farmland, two was the general rural character of the town, and three in a squeaker was the trail systems. And we had a mix of people here between less than 10 years and over 20 years. Um, and the things we don't like about the town, number one was the lack of a cohesive walkable village center. Two was sidewalks and crosswalks, a lack thereof. And three was rapid residential development. And for the things that we would most like to improve if we had a magic wand, and that was, number one was preserving land, uh, smart development. Two was to have mutual respect and participation between the government and all citizens. And a three-way tie for number three, create a village center, better traffic management, and sidewalks and crosswalks. First, uh, in, the, in the things to preserve, the first one was open space, 13. After that was the small town field and the preservation of historic buildings. Um, the next, the, this question two, a lack of elderly housing, the lack of sidewalks, and the lack of uh, sufficient athletic fields. And things that we wanted to change for the better were um, a community center and a senior center. And those were two different things, but they sort of merged in the county and they kind of overwhelmed everything else. The, the second one was um, open fields and beautify the common. So, as you can see, there are a lot of common values in this town. We're going to distill all this, pull it all together, document everything you said, not just those top three. And then the next step is to articulate a vision and a set of goals to reach towards. To it, and then we have to identify ways of achieving them. And as Judy point, pointed out in the beginning, there really are sort of three main areas for the master plan. It's the vision and the set of goals, which is what you want, which is what we talked about today the inventory of what you have, and then you figure out from where you are, you assess what you have, to where you want to go, what are the steps to get there. And that's the implementation plan. And that's the very last step. But today was a major step towards articulating that vision and set of goals. And that's what we will be bringing back to you. The Master Plan Update Steering Committee looks to hold other public forums in the future, so stay tuned.